Before I'll carry a gun, I need 1,500 rounds with one malfunction or less to certify it for self-defense. I just won't carry it until I know I've gotten to that point, because then I know it's reliable. All right? And in these springs, I know I have to replace them about every six months or so. They start to wear out. Or I'll see a magazine go bad, and I label the magazines with a number. And if that goes bad, I throw it in the bag, and I know when it goes home, it gets a new spring. And then I bring it back and check it and see if it works. Recoil springs, the thing that makes the slide going back and forth, very easy to replace, they should be replaced too. All right? And in the other springs, uh, depending on your pistol, you may need a gunsmith or you may not, but there should be some maintenance on your gun if you shoot it a lot. Now, if you buy a gun and you only put 50 rounds on it, springs are never gonna go bad, all right? But you're never gonna shoot well either. So you need to get some practice. Uh, to make sure to get these parts going and take care of that gun and make it work. Josh is gonna talk about this a little bit, but you gotta be kinda anal about this stuff and know that you're taking care of your gun. Machines do two things. What do they do? Work or break. <laughs> Bingo. And proper maintenance prevents that. It's like a car. You know, guns require basic maintenance. You gotta, you know, like in a car, you change the oil. You work and change your brake pads. Uh, parts on guns wear out the same way. A recoil spring can wear out. Magazine springs can wear out. The actual spring kit inside the gun, your striker spring or your main spring on your hammer, can wear out. So when you're cleaning a gun, one of the things you want to do is check for certain things. And, so, and to do that, you need to know the cycle of operation of your firearm. And there's eight basic functions to that firearm. There's feeding, which is the bullet coming up to the top of the magazine. Okay, there's chambering, which is the slide driving the round into the chamber. There's locking, which is the barrel locking into place in the slide. Firing, go figure. Unlocking, extracting, ejecting, and cocking. That happens every time you pull that trigger, that whole cycle of a semi-auto pistol. Pop, 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 pop. And keeping your firearm clean helps facilitate all of those functions. Uh, make sure your magazine's not dented, crushed, anything like that. Uh, press your follower, make sure your follower is tight up in the top. And you've got a little nub down on the bottom of that floor plate. And what you can do is you compress that nub and very easily slide that floor plate off. And be careful because that spring's under tension, it'll, you know, it'll take a tooth. And just take it out, you can wipe out the inside of your magazine and then just reassemble it by snapping it back into place. What's, what's the first thing you have to do to block the disassembly? Fire. Hold the trigger. So if you've got a strike or fire gun like the Smith & Wesson, the Glock, I think, it is imperative that you clear that weapon. The first thing you're going to do before you clean your slide is you're going to look at it. You're going to check for cracks, any kind of unusual wear, galling, anything like that, you know, anything that just looks weird. Second thing you want to check are your sights. Are they straight? Are they, have they shifted while you're shooting? Or are they broken? Are they tight? Do they wiggle? Just make sure they're, they're all good. Okay, on the, see how long on the inside? Those rails are what you want to keep the cleanest because that is what slides against your frame. So what you can do is basically for these pistols, they're so easy to maintain, they're designed to be that way. You can use Q-tips, shop towels, anything that you can just get down in there. Uh, a lot of people use a solvent, some people use CLP. A, a good CLP is fine, like, you know, Break Free or Hoppies or uh, Impro 7, anything like that. Everybody's got kind of got their own preference. see it you can clean it. you know clean the outside make sure you get your breech face which is this part right here where your firing pin comes out of the breech face another part you want to get is if you look at your breech face there's a little hook in there everybody see that little hook it's called your extractor what that extractor does is it pulls the spent case out of the chamber when the guns fire and that extractor is actually under spring tension and has to flex and if it's really crudded up in there, a lot of times that hook won't snap completely over that case run. 
and your gunnel malfunctions. So you want to make sure you get like a, a nylon brush or something like that and really scrub out under that extractor really well. Uh, check the crown real well. The crown is right here at the end of your muzzle. And you want to make sure it's not dinged up or anything like that because if you get a ding in that, in that crown, what happens is that burning gas that propels that bullet out of the barrel is going to have a spot where it comes out a little bit more than everywhere else. It's uneven. And what it's going to do is blow that bullet off in whatever the opposite direction of where that, that thing is. Your locking lug is right above the chamber. And then your bottom lug, you want to check that. Check it for chips, cracks, anything like that. Check your feed ramps. Make sure they're smooth. These will save you a lot of money in the long run because they're reusable. A bag of patches, you know, it's 10, 15 bucks. Once you use them, you're done. You throw it out. Uh, and also, with a patch, you're getting about 30% contact with your board. With these, you're getting 100%. And, uh, you know, and once it gets dirty and foul, throw it in the sink with some hot soapy water. And I've, I've got boar snakes that are eight, nine years old that I use every day in the <coughs> and they hold up real well. The big Check your magazine release, make sure it's moving freely. If you've got a decock or maybe <coughs> make sure it's okay. Look at your ejector, which is... On all of these guns, there's a little piece. I'll show you everybody because it's kind of different. That's your ejector, yep. Yep, that's it. This is the guy right here. Make sure it's not cracked, broken, chipped, anything like that. Uh, that's your ejector. Right there. On yours, it's that guy right there. Sure? Yep. <laughs> On yours, your ejector is that guy right there. Ejectors are important because what do they do? Eject. Uh, you definitely want to get around your locking block, which is this area right here, and make sure there's no carbon buildup on there or anything like that. You can use a bronze brush to clean that out. Check your hand if you have a hammer fire gun. Check your hammer. You can see here. If you got a striker fire gun. You know. Check out, like on the Glocks, you've got your cruciform there and safety lever. Just basically look for anything that's chipped, cracked, or broken, or anything like that. Once you do that, like I said, just get in there with Q-tips, shop towel, wipe it out real good. Don't over lubricate also, because as we were just talking about lint, guess what oil does? And what happens when you mix oil and lint? It turns into sludge. And it gets really nasty and goopy. So when you're lubricating your gun, when you reassemble it, what I like to do is just put two drops of oil on those rails. Just enough to get them wet. Then when you do your barrel, you do want some oil on the outside of your barrel. And just put a drop on there and just coat everything really well. You should only have enough on there to when where you touch that barrel, it leaves a fingerprint. You want to make sure you get around your locking engagements here. And put the barrel back in. Press your recoil spring. And your slide is good to go. Check your recoil springs. Uh, same thing. You want to make sure nothing's damaged, they're not bent, kinked. Anything like that. Make sure it's you want those lugs facing. This is your back end. That's the front end. That front end goes in that little hole. You want to kind of you'll just compress it just a little bit and slide right up against that barrel. Go ahead and take that out and try it. You gotta kind of press it a little bit. Let's put it in here. Compress it up here. There you go. Go. Oh. And then put it back on your frame. What you do. Yeah, you've got these rails right here. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Slides in like that. Oh wait, we gotta put this in. Right? Sorry. There we go. That's all you do is rotate that lever and it snaps back into place. All right, last thing to do is the function check. Make sure your gun's clear, close your slide. 
Point your gun in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. It should go click. Don't let the trigger go. If you've already let your trigger go, go ahead and recock your gun. Okay, pull, just pull your trigger and hold it back. Now, without letting go of the trigger, cycle your slide again. Now, gently release your trigger and it's going to go click. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's called reset. That lets you know that your disconnect is working. Pull the trigger again. There you go. That's how you do your, your disconnector check on that gun. Uh, your disconnector is basically what keeps your gun from going full auto. <laughs> and, it, and it also prevents it from firing out of battery. Uh, if you have a safety on the gun, go ahead, cock the gun, and put your safety on, and pull the trigger, and nothing should happen. Uh, everybody kind of will develop their own personal cleaning habits, kind of, you know, everybody brushes their teeth in a different way, you know. And, uh, what was it, you know, Mel Brooks, up and down, up and down, side, 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 you know. Every, every, every. <laughs>